Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. An uncle's affection for his niece. You gave her this bear, this, this Valentine's card, and you gave your wife a mug. Has his family suspicious. Sometimes she sleeps in your bedroom, on a mattress, on the floor, and your wife's in another room. I agree there's, there's things that look bad. But what else is coming out? Let's talk about what needs to happen, okay? I thought maybe we could talk about me being a horrible parent some more. That has mom challenging Dr. Phil. You walk in these shoes, you'll know what it's like. Well, lady, when you walk in these shoes, you'll see bull when you see it. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Yesterday, I sat down with Bridget, who said she was worried that her brother-in-law, Kevin, might be having an inappropriate relationship with her 16-year-old daughter, Grace. Bridget said she started seeing red flags after she found an empty can of whipped cream hidden in her daughter's bedroom. Grace later told her mom that Kevin had put the whipped cream on his neck and asked her to lick it off. Although Bridget thought the whipped cream incident was inappropriate, she still questions whether something is going on between her 38-year-old brother-in-law and her teenage daughter. But Bridget's sister Tammy says she 100% believes that Kevin is molesting her niece while Kevin's wife Carrie stands by in denial. This dispute has divided the entire family with Carrie threatening to sue her sisters for slander if they continue to call Kevin a molester. Kevin and Grace spent a lot of time in Grace's room with the door closed. I went into her room and found a hidden bottle of whipped cream, and then I found a letter from Kevin to Grace. It spoke of their relationship. She's getting older now, and she might even get a boyfriend. I won't be happy about it. I felt that something inappropriate had happened. My mind does not want to accept that something bad can happen. When I found the whipped cream and then I found the letter, I was physically sick. I love you with all of my heart. You will be dating, will eventually find a guy. I'd be lying if I said there wouldn't be a part of me that doesn't like it, though. I don't care that you are only 16. He doesn't like when I date guys or talk to guys. Grace wanted me to bring a bottle of whipped cream to the house because she wanted me to make Sundays. He put it on his neck and asked her to lick it off. That would have been enough evidence for me to go to the police. What are you going to say to the police? I found a can of whipped cream. I have one priority here, and I don't get the urgency on anybody's part about the safety of this child. How is it okay for Kevin and Grace to be in her bedroom with the door shut, you not knowing about it, you told all the time, and I don't you know fuck what in with Kevin? Everything about this is so inappropriate. I know how to move this thing along, so I think we can get to a productive place, and I would like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, just you and I. Okay. Let me tell you what I know about this situation, mm -hmm. just what I think I know about this situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you tell me if, if I'm reading the situation right. Okay. Grace uh, lost her father to cancer about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And at that time, she really withdrew mm -hmm. and hasn't been to school since, as a matter of fact. And you kind of stepped up and got her out of her cocoon and yes. got her to go outside and yes. took her to the mall and took her shopping and mm -hmm. kind of got her to re-engage with society. Yes. And I think everybody was very grateful mm -hmm. for you doing that. And I think that, to use your term, things kind of snowballed from there. Correct. Your wife works second shift correct and so you're home 
nobody's around. Your mm -hmm. son's 19. He's gone doing his thing. So there right. you are. She's in need. You have the time. Exactly. You're a family member. You care. So mm -hmm. you just kind of started in investing time in her, which is exactly. a, a, a very kind thing to do. Mm -hmm. And you say it kind of snowballed from there, and you guys developed a, a very close bond. Mm -hmm. And without sensitivity to how things appeared, mm -hmm. I, I think um, unintentionally, I think you kind of ran some red lights along the way. Wouldn't you agree? I, I absolutely agree, Dr. Phil, yeah. 100%. And, and thank you for that. I, uh -huh. I, I think if you can acknowledge that, then, oh, we're, then we're heading in the right direction. Absolutely. You, you, you ran some red lights there. I did. And you two got too close, and she got yes. too reliant on you. Absolutely. And before you know it, you found yourself being too reliant on her. Mm -hmm. And so pretty soon, this just kind of becomes a give-and-take relationship. Even though you're 38 and she's 16, and that's why when you wrote that letter, it didn't seem like an uncle to niece letter because you were really more invested in the relationship than would ordinarily be the case. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself at, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what, uh, when, when, you, when you look at the letter and you're, you're saying things like, I love you with all my heart. The mm -hmm. way I love you is unique. I don't even know how to explain it. You were kind of confused about it as well. I'm bad with words. It was poor wording. What I meant is, is like you said, I, let's, you hate to say you, you have nieces and nephews. You hate to say one's a favorite. Maybe you, you, you're closer to them. I just, that's what I was trying to say. She has a special place in my heart. Um, from from as close as we have gotten yeah. and plus uh, you know I also feel like I have that father figure role to her so I didn't want to come right out either and say I love you like my own daughter which that's part of what I meant by this I also love her like a daughter and want to protect her but at the same time I don't want to this you know I don't want to try to take the place of her father or ever you know want her to think that I'm doing that so <clears throat> that's why probably another reason for some of the bad wording there Dr. Phil yeah, and that bad wording comes from your needs being met mm -hmm. when you say, it's understandable. You mean you're, you're invested in her mm -hmm. and, you know, you don't say I love you like a daughter. You say you're my best friend and you say I, I get something out of it when you send me hearts on your phone and when you say I look nice, I mean, mm -hmm. she's making you feel better about you. I mean, come on, you're 38. Absolutely. Here's this young, attractive girl and she's telling you you look nice and that you make her feel good and that's making you feel good. You're running red lights as fast as you can go. I mean, mm -hmm. and you, you can't be confused that people on the outside are going, this, the, 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 the creep meter is, is going. Okay, gotcha. Is, is pegging over here. Okay. Um, and you say, I get a little over emotional sometimes. Mm -hmm. I said, I love you in my own special way. Uh, you say, I meant as a friend and an uncle, but that isn't what you said. Exactly. And then you start adding things up, and you say, okay, we've got the whipped cream situation here. Right, right. Is that not really creepy? Yeah, it absolutely. I, okay, and then I, I you take wrong. things that you may right. say, you have no idea how innocent this is, but when you look at them, yes. she spends the night at your house sometimes, right? Yes. She sleeps in your bedroom with you sometimes, right? My wife has. And your wife doesn't. Some, right. Uh, just hear okay. me. Okay, uh-huh. Sometimes she sleeps in your bedroom with you, without your wife, on a mattress, okay, on the yes. floor, at the foot of the bed. Yes. You're in the bed. She's on a mattress, on the floor, at the foot of the bed, and your wife's in another room. Correct. Correct? That's, that's, yes. the, that's the right architecture of this situation. Can I tell you how incredibly bad an idea that is? I, as long as the way I looked at that is as long as my wife 
was comfortable. She knew nothing was going on between us. She was comfortable enough for us to do that. As long as she was okay with it, I didn't have an issue with it. Okay. On the list of bad ideas of the week, mm -hmm. that's up here at number one. You gave her this bear. I did. This, right? Yes. Okay, then you gave her this Valentine's card, and you gave your wife a mug. And later, I cannot even begin to tell you how dysfunctional I think this situation is. Do you want to know what I think is going wrong here? I thought maybe we could talk about me being a horrible parent some more. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Adam has trust issues with women. Including the ones he's seeing while he's married to you. She says her son-in-law is selfish. He buys things that he can't afford. And violent. You got an email from hotel security. Were you fighting in the room, yelling and screaming? Well, not yelling. There, there is louder voices. What happened that led to this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't talk that way on my stage. Are we clear on that? Then on Thursday... Why would a woman who can see... I wanted to go blind permanently. ...do the unthinkable? She put liquid drain cleaner into her eyes. That's Thursday. Think about this. Whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Going to her house, into her room behind closed doors. Right. Sending her a letter that says, I love you in ways I can't even describe. Here's how good you make me feel when you tell me I look nice. Sleeping in your room with you when your wife's in another room. Do, would you like me to put you on the witness stand and cross-examine you in front of a jury? They would put your ass under the jail. Okay. Now, Can I say one thing? The okay. truth yeah. is... I think it looks a whole lot worse than it is, mm -hmm. but what I'm trying to impact upon you is how bad it looks. I, I agree. And I, I'm, can, can we clarify also, though, can we clarify I am the one that I did bring all these things up. Um, I'm, I was acknowledging that there are red flags. There are things that look weird. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm here. I'm an open book. You've given her, like, gifts, like stuffed animals? That was um, on Valentine's Day. A and a card for... When... when okay, where, where's the... Where, where are the stuffed animals? We, we have the stuffed animals? <laughs> okay, you gave her this bear. I did. Um, then... You, and then you gave her this... Right? Yes. Okay. Then you gave her this Valentine's card. Yes. Right? And you gave your wife a mug. We share Valentine's Day uh, is not about gifts with my wife and I. The reason I did buy Grace these things, she, if you knew how upset she was at that time with her father passing, she, and the, what I thought in my heart, when I, when I seen this for her, is th this little girl, her father probably would have bought her something for Valentine's Day. If she we were in court to... and I was trying to convict him and you were a jury and would vote guilty, stand up. <laughs> guilty of what? <laughs> I mean, what, to, of inappropriate behavior or red flags, things that look weird? Well, at this point, I'm work I'm, I would like to know what you think. Do you get my point and the audience's point that this looks really bad? Yes, yes, I agree. There's, there's things that look bad, absolutely. You have run red lights. You've crossed boundaries with her. Personally... I don't think you've molested this girl. Of course not. I don't think that that's taken place. No. no. 
I think that that's a matter of timing. I don't think that will I tell you why. Yeah. I think I, I think you could lose yourself in this relationship. You have incredibly bad judgment. Mm -hmm. And in your submission tape to me, you said, I don't, you know, I don't know what I should do. Should I uh, leave it up to my wife? That I don't know what your wife says to you behind closed doors. I, I don't know. I know what she says when she's spinning it out here. But if she isn't standing on your chest and telling you, bucko, you better straighten your ass up and you better take a giant step back from this girl and get yourself under control than she ought to be. Mm -hmm. okay. Because I'm telling you that you're headed for peril here. I, I think the best thing that ever happened to you is happening to you right now. Okay. Because I'm trying to give you a sobering wake-up call before mm -hmm. you do something incredibly stupid. And I think you need to acknowledge that, yeah, I kind of lost my head here, and I, I, I need to... Mm -hmm. I, I, need, I need to wake up and realize I'm her uncle, I'm an adult, okay. uh, and I need to back off here. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying to help you. That's, that's what I'm here for. Is your I, help. Don't think um, you, I don't think for, for Grace, and um, yeah, I hope we can we can move things forward to help her as well, to where well, she the, understands. Well, I hope so. The, the family has been backstage watching mm -hmm. uh, with Grace and her older sister. Want to say, and we're going to hear what they want to say when they come back, and what I want to say to Bridget after the break. We'll be right back. <laughs> someone has walked in my shoes, you don't know what you would do. I thought Kevin was a friend for her. Without him, she would just be going in a downward spiral. And later, I was trying to put a pretty good spin on what you were doing with her until I heard her say the things that she just said and having heard all of that, shame on you. The last time we saw Hollywood actor Nicholas Brendan, he walked off this stage in a huff. Now he's back. Will he look me in the eye and answer my questions? We'll see. You were arrested just recently. You were drunk at the time. That was a new Brendan, yeah. Police say a woman told them Nicholas Brendan took her car keys and started choking her. Did you obstruct her breathing? No, I held her down to get the keys. That's the sixth time that you've been arrested. His downward spiral. Police said you passed out, you had urinated on yourself. When you wake up in jail and you're not sure why you're there, that's a very, very lonely feeling. The voicemail he left a Dr. Phil producer. I just need some help. I need Please help me. <laughs> Please help me. What were you feeling at that moment? Hopeless. Probably. And afraid. The reported suicide attempt. Did you want to die that day? I look at my life and I just think, you know, how things could have been different, you know? Nicholas Brendan returns this November. Okay, Bridget, what did you want to say? Unless someone has walked in my shoes and tried to be the only parent for three children who lost their dad, you don't know what you would do. I thought Kevin was a friend for her. I, I walk on eggshells with Grace just to keep her alive, to keep her from that day to now. And he's been a friend to her. And I think without him, she would just be going in a downward spiral. And it's, it looks like he's, it looks really bad, I know. But if you knew him like I know him, you wouldn't think these things. There are other children. Bridget's older daughter, Peyton, says her uncle Kevin is overly affectionate with her 16-year-old sister and calls her pet names like Lovebug and Pookie. But Peyton says things really got weird 
when Grace tried to stop hanging out with her uncle and he became angry and said, no, we can't stop hanging out just because people are saying things. I love you and you love me. So let's hear what Peyton has to say. Look at this. Kevin has an unnatural relationship with Grace. He's not as close to anyone in the family like he is to her. I didn't think the relationship was weird at first, but then he started to come around too much. Grace told me that when the rumor started, she told Kevin that they shouldn't hang out as much anymore. Kevin got mad and started saying things like, we can't just stop hanging out because people are saying things because I love you and you love me. That is really weird. And then on Valentine's Day, he got Grace two stuffed animals and chocolates. These are the two stuffed animals that Kevin got Grace, and he also got her this card. He only got his wife a coffee mug. I feel like a coffee mug is something you get your boss, not your wife. Kevin treats Grace like she's his wife, but she's his 16-year-old niece. See, Peyton, thank you for joining us. You, you, you've been watching everything, so you're up to speed. What can you add to this conversation? Um, I think that things look a little different than how I've said them. I definitely think Grace needs Kevin. I don't think that it's inappropriate. I think the things that look weird are weird looking, but I don't think there's anything inappropriate going on. My dad meant everything to me, and when he died, um, Kevin had stepped up, and if he wasn't here, I would be dead. I wouldn't be sitting in this chair right here doing this. And when she tries to make him seem like a monster, Tammy, that it, it's not like that at all. It's him caring about me and making sure that I'm alive. Because if he wasn't here, I wouldn't be here either. And that's, that's how it is. That is how I'm laying it out on the table. He has never harmed me. He has done nothing but make sure that I am healthy and boost my confidence. And since all of this has been going on and he's not been around a lot, all I do is sit in my room and, and cry constantly, constantly, and wonder, what am I going to do when I wake up in the morning? Like... I don't even want to wake up in the morning. Like, so since he's been here and been helping me, he has, he's what is keeping me alive. I appreciate your sharing that. And um, as I said, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. And I, I think the grief process has some elements of depression and other things that have become intertwined with the grief itself and so it's not just grief and that sometimes suggests that uh, some professional help uh, would really benefit that person and I think that's probably the case here and with your permission mom I would really like to arrange to get some help for your daughter to untangle all of that and evaluate it all and untangle it all Thank and you. get her the help, and you would avail yourself of that help, yes. right? I have two rules um, in dealing with children that I really feel very, very strongly about. And one is that we never ask children to deal with adult issues. Mm -hmm. And second is we never burden children with things that they cannot control. Mm -hmm. Those are two things that I just think are really important. And right now, um, I would like to turn this discussion to some very adult family issues that don't involve a 16-year-old and, and shouldn't involve a 16-year-old. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about some adult family issues, and then you can say what you want to okay, say. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back. Having heard all of that, shame on you for fostering that kind of dependency from that child on you. Tammy says even though her sister Bridget recognizes the red flag, she still refuses to report to the police what they believe is inappropriate behavior on their brother-in-law Kevin's part with Bridget's 16-year-old daughter. Now, we just heard from uh, this daughter. Uh, she spoke um, very directly and very eloquently about the fact uh, that but for you, uh, she would be dead today and um, I was um, you know trying to put a, 
a, a, a, a pretty good spin um, on what you were doing with her until I heard her say the things that she just said and having heard all of that, shame on you. Shame on you for fostering that kind of dependency from that child on you. I, I got to tell you, that's, I'm, I, I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get I, it. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't get it. I don't it. understand what you're trying yeah. to say. Well, you yeah. need to understand what I'm trying to say. I wish you would help me understand. Because uh, if you're telling me that you've got this child here that is hanging on by her fingernails and is that vulnerable and is that close to being underwater and involved in self-harm and is saying, I, I am that close to going over the edge and you're fostering the kind of relationship that you are describing and you are doing here as opposed to getting her into professional help, professional oh, care, involving... Yeah. No, no, no. Her. You yes. need to listen to what I'm saying. You can get self-righteous and sanctimonious on your own time. You came to me for my opinion. You came to me for my opinion. You need to hear my opinion. Fostering that kind of codependency with a child that is that vulnerable and writing the kind of things you're writing is wrong, wrong, wrong. And if you are telling yourself what you're telling yourself, somebody needs to give you a wake-up call here. This is not a matter, this is not a matter of whether I think he has taken liberties with your daughter in terms of molesting her or whatever, because frankly, I don't think he has. I mean, I've, I've said that to you. I'm saying that now. This is so dysfunctional here. I cannot even begin to tell you how dysfunctional I think this situation is. And you say, oh, I've got these three kids, and I've been through all of this, and I don't know. That's why you're here. Do you want to know what I think is going wrong here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, think, I know you're going to say it's me. Jeez. Yeah, okay. <laughs> are you concerned about your daughter or are you concerned about how you look? I've never been concerned about how I look. That's true. That is true. You can ask anybody that knows me. I'm asking you. And I'm telling you. I don't care how I come across. Your daughter is in a really vulnerable place here. And I'm trying to help her every single day. While she's in Tennessee, while they're in Indiana, while she's in Cincinnati, in my house, I'm trying to keep her alive every day. And when you walk in these shoes, you'll know what it's like to be the only person well, lady, when you walk in these shoes, you'll see bull when you see it. <laughs> and what this, what, what is going on in this relationship is not in your daughter's best interest. You need to not be struggling with that. You need to recognize that that is not in your daughter's best interest. Grace would not have come on this stage and been able to speak to you like she did without Kevin boosting her confidence all the time. You have known us for five minutes. Let's talk about what needs to happen going forward. I thought maybe we could talk about me being a horrible parent some more. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. She can't stand her son-in-law. He's disrespectful. Calls me vulgar names. Adam has trust issues with women. Including the ones he's seeing while he's married to you. That's tomorrow. Let's talk about what needs to happen going forward, okay? Do, do you want to talk about that or do you not? I, 
I thought maybe we could talk about me being a horrible parent some more. I can play this back for you and you can underline the parts where I've said you're a horrible parent. You won't find those. <laughs> In a condescending way, you've said it. Okay. Well, didn't you just tell me you weren't concerned with how you come across? You're making me seem like I don't want to help my daughter. I don't care if you hate my guts, but don't tell me I'm not trying to help my daughter. I am the only parent they have. And I'm going to fight for them. And I don't care how I look, but that's what I know. And that's what she knows. And that's what Grace knows. And that's what my sisters know. I want to help you. I want to help you be a parent going forward. I want to help your daughter not be of such low self-esteem that she's harming herself. I want to help you be a parent to get your daughter's self-worth off the floor so she's not vulnerable to being exploited by anybody in any way. To do that, I have to help you. You're the only mother they've got which means you got to take care of yourself because you can't give away what you don't have. And you're about to explode. You're so tired, you can't even sometimes figure out how you're going to get out the door another day and get back home. I get it. I get it. I understand that. I'm here to help you, but you got to wake up. You can't be in denial. I said, shame on him when she sits there and say, I'd be, I'd be dead, but for him. That's because she needs attention constantly, and he gives it to her because he loves her. Well, sis, I'm sorry, but that's like giving an addict drugs. That's like giving an addict drugs, I'm sorry. And I'm reading letters he's written where he's saying, you know, thanks for giving me attention. Thanks for making me feel better about myself. Thanks for, he's in a codependent relationship with her going back and forth and feeding on each other. That is not healthy with a 16 year old child that is struggling to keep their nose above the water line. That is not healthy to do with a vulnerable child. That is not healthy for an adult to do behind a closed bedroom door with a 16-year-old child. That is not healthy. Sorry, just not healthy. Shouldn't be happening. Should not be allowed to happen. Don't let that happen. She needs help. If he can be part of the solution, fine. If he's part of the problem, that's not okay. That is not okay. If she says, but for my 38-year-old uncle being involved with me at this level, I would be dead, oh, my God. That is so sick, I can't even begin to tell you how dysfunctional that is. I agree. I then agree. let's agree on that. Don't fight me. I'm pushing you up the hill. You don't want to fight me. You don't have to like me. I'm expendable. Cuss me all the way home, but take my help. So what you know is the man that is shepherding your daughter, the man that has kept your daughter alive, what we know about him is he's got incredibly bad judgment. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. This is a man, however well intended, has incredibly bad judgment in this situation. He has said himself, I don't use good words. I have bad judgment. I, according to the family, he sees her behind closed doors. 
He gave her a cell phone. That's not true. Cell, the, the, what? That's not true. I've never gave her a secret well, cell phone. I'm just telling you what, okay. read the line. According to the family, I'm just telling you what okay. the family's told me. This is what Tammy said about the cell phone. Knew about self-harming and didn't disclose that's, to the that's mother. Not true. I'm telling okay. you what the family has said. Okay. Help Grace wash her sheets, didn't disclose to the mother. Visited Grace when no one else is at home. Brought whipped cream to her bedroom. According to Grace, asked her to lick it off two times. You say you don't remember. Wrote an inappropriate letter. Brought her a pregnancy test, didn't disclose to the mother. Allowed her to sleep in his bedroom without his wife present. Declared a 16-year-old girl his best friend at age 38. Involved children in adult <coughs> issues. Let me tell you, bad judgment, bad judgment, bad judgment, bad judgment, bad judgment, bad judgment. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look mm -hmm. at these things when you go along. It, these things, every single one of them. You talk about red flags. Mom, come on. What you know, you don't know whether he has been sexually inappropriate with her personally I don't think so right. I, I, I keep saying that because I hate for a guy to get railroaded just because he has poor judgment and we all agree he has poor judgment yeah we've always especially said that me. I especially agree with that yeah. I mean it's a bad it's, it's a terrible situation it's a terrible situation when the good news is you've got bad judgment <laughs> But that's the good news, right? I mean, right. It, because it means you haven't done something horrible. I told him I think that's a matter of timing. <clears throat> but bad judgment, bad judgment. So what you know is the man that is shepherding your daughter, the man that has kept your daughter alive, your sister alive, what we know about him is he's got incredibly bad judgment. Mm -hmm. I have a big heart, Dr. Phil. <laughs> he has bad judgment in like a teenager way. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's very yeah. immature. Like, he wants to be... So what is the final solution here? I'll be back. If Bridget doesn't kill me at the break. <laughs> This November, the shocking stories that made headlines. A surrogate mom scam. She faked her pregnancies. After five months, I'm told there is no baby. How long do I have to be punished for this? You destroyed our lives. I am very in love with Kit Morris. She's already married. She wanted a divorce. But obsessed with a country star. He signed your back. I got it tattooed. You're serving your husband with a restraining order, and you've got Mary me Kent Moore painted on your window? What are you, 12? They survived a house of horrors. Locks on the refrigerator, blood splattered on a wall. The children speak out for the first time. You found some guns? Yes. We were going to go inside and kill all of them. This is the month. Did he kidnap your daughter? He did. No. Where anything can happen. She asked me to come get her. You're lying. I'm lying? Why don't you yeah. shut the hell up? I'm not going to shut my mouth. If I didn't think I'd go to jail for it, I would go across this three feet of floor right here, and I'd take his damn head off. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Bridget, you heard me say you're the only mother these girls have mm -hmm. or will ever have. You need help. And then you have a situation like this crop up, and the fact that you don't want to believe it, it just makes you just, we, we get like functionally blind. We look at all of these, th these red flags, all this inappropriate behavior, and you're like, gee, I just, I don't know. Yes, you do. You just don't want to know. And it, it, it's not okay. You've denied it. Don't deny it. Wrong, bad, stopped, right now, this minute, no more, period, zip, zero, not a, no more. Now, here's what we described. 
you know, Carrie says, well, he's got bad judgment like a teenager. Okay. He says, I don't know how to say things right. I, I don't recognize that the, these are... The, is that the kind of person that we want being the steward for someone that is on the brink? Right. No, of course not. We, we need help. You need help. And we just need to admit that and acknowledge that. And we need to come up with and set up a plan for this family. You need help mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically. And let me tell you, I'm, the, I'm that guy that's going to make that happen for you. And it begins with you. And don't feel selfish about taking care of yourself. You, you need to take care of yourself. You need a break. <laughs> There's an organization called OnSite. They are the worldwide leader uh, in intensive workshops and treatment, specializing in emotional trauma, whatever it might be, and mental health issues. And we consider OnSite a trusted source for anybody that's struggling with trauma, self-worth and esteem, and mental health issues. And on-site, I tell you, these, this place is located on a beautiful ranch just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And I've been talking with them about this family. And that's the first place I would like to start with you guys. And I know arrangements have to be made and things like that. And we're going to talk with you about that. But I, I really want you to have a break. I want you to let somebody take care of you for a while, and we're, we'll talk about that backstage, okay? Okay. That's just a beginning, and then we're going to work on some stuff going forward. I think you guys are going to, you've got some nice things coming up in your life right now, trust me. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today. I want you to log on to drphil.com, share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter using hashtag Dr. Phil and hashtag suspicious mom. Uh, we will see you next time. And if you're wondering, yes, we're going to get some help over on this side of the room as well because I want there to be some real clear definitions about where these boundary lines should be. So we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Okay. Dr. Phil. My mom kicked me out when I was 15 years old. I did not throw her out. Is this an ungrateful daughter? She was eating on the sofa. Three days later, the dishes were still on the sofa. Or is mom... She told me, you need to lose weight, you're so fat. I never called my daughter a fat bitch. Delusional. You went to reunification therapy? I was at her knees begging, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you, Courtney. My daughter was recoiling in the chair. Did you threaten the therapist? I did not threaten the therapist, sir. You throw a check on the floor and say, have a nice life. This is a therapist whose job it is to bring mother and daughter back together. Yes, sir. And as I said, that was the morning. And she says, I quit. I quit. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. to take a look inside of this house. Gorgeous, organized living room. A meticulous kitchen. Perfectly clean, right? Yes. This belongs to my guest, Beverly, a divorced mom who takes pride in her appearance and her home. Now take a look at this. Clothes and hangers thrown on the floor. Bathroom counter. A complete disaster. 
This mask belongs to 20-year-old college student Courtney. Can you imagine these two living together? <laughs> well, they did it one time. They are mother and daughter. Courtney says her mom, Beverly, is such a neat freak and messed up in the mind that she kicked Courtney out of the house when she was 15. But Beverly says her daughter chose to leave. Five years later, this mother and daughter are still at odds, and Courtney says the scars run very deep. A bitter custody battle, sexual abuse allegations, and, well, just a whole lot more. Of course, Mom Beverly is 100% convinced their rift is all because of a messy room. Take a look. If you look around my home, you'll see that most things are in place and in order. I try to keep a neat, tidy house. If I left a dirty dish in the sink, I would hear about it six months later. My mom likes things absolutely perfectly in their place. If it's perfect, I'm uncomfortable. My closet's not organized. A chair has my bedspread on it. Our last big fight happened when I was going to a movie premiere. I had baked cookies and left a mess in the kitchen. Dishes that she used were still there from the morning. Both bedrooms, both bathrooms, completely wiped out. I had my own bathroom and I had my own bedroom, so I didn't feel the need to put every single thing away. I left her a note placing her on restriction. She was not allowed to use the TV or the computer. There was a two-page typed note telling me I was a slob, I was a pig. When I came home the next day, I found her watching TV with her feet up on my desk eating cheese and crackers. And that's when the fight started. It was one of my worst moments ever in my life. I lost complete control. My mother threw a empty Parmesan cheese container at me. A few days later, her and her father announced that she was moving out. I got upset and I said, if you don't want to be here, just go, just get out. Courtney heard, get out, go away, don't come back. The way she tells the story is we had one fight and I left to go to my dad's and never came home. And that's just not what happened. My mom kicked me out when I was 15 years old. I actually said the words, get out of my house and slam the door in my face. Well, Courtney says her mom Beverly's behavior was abusive way before their fight over a Parmesan cheese container and cookies. Whenever my mom saw me eating junk food or in tight clothes, she would tell me how fat I was, how I needed to get on a diet, nobody's ever going to want me. That's a good one for her. I had no self-esteem. I look back at pictures of me now when I was a child and think, wow, I wasn't fat. If I didn't do very well on a test, she would tell me, you're never going to amount to anything more than flipping burgers, you're not smart, nobody's going to want you. In the five years I've lived with my dad, my mom has done countless crazy things. She actually sent some random guy I didn't know to take pictures of me at a high school football game. That was terrifying, by the way. She sent people into my work, asked me questions about my personal life. I don't answer her text messages. Her number is blocked. I delete her emails before reading them. As of right now, I have no relationship with my mom. Okay. How long has it been since you've seen each other? Uh, Easter. Easter. Yes, sir. So months. Yes, sir. All right. And um, how long since you've really spent any quality time together? Years. Years. Okay, so let's talk about this one big fight that you say there was just one fight yes, sir. at 15, when she yes, was 15. Sir. Yes, sir. And as a result of this one fight, this argument, that she abandoned you and went with her dad, and that was it. You've yes, been cast aside, left all these years since then. Yes, sir. She spent a week at her father's house and a week at my home. She came home to my home. The house had been completely cleaned. I came home from work that evening. The house, her dinner dishes, she was eating on the sofa at that time. Three days later, the dishes were still on the sofa. Um, Tuesday, the books were all over the counter. The house was a mess. Um, on the third day when I came home from work, she was at a movie premiere. She made cookies for her friends, left everything out. The eggs had been left out, now spoiled. Um, and the house was a mess. So I left her a note putting her on restriction, specifically telling her no TV, no computer, no phone. Well, I have that letter. Yes. Um, and uh, some excerpts from it. You said, I have asked you nicely, begged, yelled, and cried over the way you treat our home and me with such disrespect. 
You may not have any TV. You will not be attending any parties this weekend. You will be giving me your phone when I return from work at 3.45 p.m. I will be disconnecting the line tomorrow on my lunch hour. This should give you plenty of time to say goodbye to your friends for the summer. Because you overslept is no reason to have left the kitchen a mess. You should have not made cookies if you didn't have time to clean your mess. You left the door to the garage open. The cat was in the garage when I opened the big door. She came running out and was almost run over. I had to chase her around the front yard. I apologize if I have once again stolen your happiness, but you are bringing it on yourself, Mom. Okay, that was the letter you got, right? Yes. How would you feel about the letter? Uh, horrible. And I spent the night on the bathroom floor because I was physically sick to my stomach. Letter's a little dramatic, but I, I, I don't see it as being a particularly egregious writing. And I have to say, that's about the last reasonable thing that I think you did. Mm -hmm. Beverly partially blames her ex-husband for their problems, but Christopher says Beverly is the one who started all the problems years ago with a false accusation. My mom falsely accused my dad of having a sexual relationship with me two days before Christmas. During the custody battle, we went to Beverly's house. While Courtney was moving her things out, she left her phone on a counter. I looked through my 15-year-old's phone. I saw pornographic text messages. It looked like the sender said it was dad. I had to investigate where this was coming from. If she had just asked me about the text messages, I would have told her the truth. My friends sent them to me when I was using my dad's phone the summer before. I didn't want him to know I was telling dirty jokes. I sent them to myself so that he wouldn't see them, and it looked like they came from my dad to me. I went into shock and I didn't know what to do. She went straight to the courts and tried to have my dad thrown in jail for being a pedophile. The next thing I knew, we were in court trying to get the phone record subpoenaed. When Children's Protective Services knocks on your door, you can't really say it's not a good time. They raked us across the coals. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. And to think my daughter had to go through the same things I went through. My daughter was asked questions she should never, ever, have been asked. We had an emergency court hearing and they let me go home with my dad. It was clear to everyone that my dad had not had an inappropriate relationship with me. My mom drags it on to this day. She says that I'm his trophy girlfriend. It's completely inappropriate and completely not true. I am now on a list of people who have been accused of being a pedophile, even though there was no basis whatsoever. Okay, Christopher, thank you for joining us. I want to get this out right straight up. Did your father send you these off-color messages? No way. He did not send those? No. But they were on his phone to your phone? Yes. Okay, so, but yet he didn't send them to you. You need to explain that so everybody understands that. When my mom kicked me out, she kept my phone. And my dad never used his phone, so for that summer, he let me use his. And when I got my phone back, I forwarded those messages to my phone because I didn't want them to be on his phone, and I didn't want him to see that my friends were sending me dirty jokes. Has she been verbally abusive to you? Yes. Well, I've never called her a bitch. I've never said anything to her like that. You've never called her a pig? I've called her a pig, yes. And later, did you steal an ambulance? No, sir. Did she steal an ambulance? That is the legend in the fire department. I went down to the beach and I just sat there. In the ambulance? Yes, sir. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is her Nigerian husband... He gave you this when he proposed? No, I bought my own ring. A scam artist? I see mom being James's cash cow. He has three different dates of birth on five passports. The marriage license, it's got typos. They put an M in license. They don't spell English how we spell. I know Nigeria. I was there. But that doesn't mean you weren't getting played. That's Monday. When I first met my husband, Chris, he seemed like a great guy. As time went on, I noticed that he would pick me apart on some of the smallest details. I always felt like an employee, not so much a wife. Our marriage became a competition. One summer, I came home with a puppy dog, and Christopher started throwing a fit, yelling he didn't get to pick the color, didn't get to have anything to do with it. He picked up his beer and threw it into the street and was yelling obscenities. 
And it was at that point that I packed up my daughter and I filed for divorce shortly after that. Courtney says her mother Beverly's unpredictable behavior during the custody battle with her father Christopher was so out of control that it ended up pushing them further apart. During the court custody battle, the judge issued a no contact order between me and my mom. She couldn't contact me, I couldn't contact her. She violated that order a few dozen times. Blatantly, she didn't care who saw. She would show up at my high school football games, send me text messages, leave me voicemails, telling me I was a spoiled little brat. Did you throw her out? No, sir, I did not throw her out. Did she kick you out or did she not? She kicked me out. And why do you say that when she says, no, you left? My dad wouldn't have let me leave. He wanted us to have a better relationship. He was there. Courtney, did you not come to my house and say, I'm taking my electronics? You went up to your room and you packed your electronics up. And you and your father said, your father's famous quote was, you guys need to take a little break from each other. And that's what he kept saying. You need to take a break. You need to break, take a break. And you guys moved out. You packed your stuff and you moved out. You came on Christmas Eve and took what you wanted and left everything else on the floor. You took everything with you. A week after I was kicked out, I did come back and take some things. I got the rest of it on Christmas Eve. But that day, we did not intend for me to leave the house forever. When I suggested to take a break, I was trying to keep the relationship together, not to break it apart. The idea was a break was for them to take a breath, step back, and maybe get a fresh start. Were you verbally abusive with your daughter? I don't think I was. I've never called my daughter a fat bitch or whatever that she said that was. I've never said anything to her like that. You've never called her a pig? No. I've called her a pig, yes. <laughs> I've told her her room looks like a pigsty and it looks like a pig lives in here, yes. But you don't think you've been verbally abusive to her? That, occasionally, maybe, yes. So yeah. Well, 30 seconds ago, you said no. Well, I've never called her a bitch. I mean, I've never used profanity to my daughter calling her anything like that. <sighs> okay. Has she been verbally abusive to you? Yes. Yes, sir, she has. What has she said to you that you consider verbally abusive? Um, you're never going to amount to anything more than flipping burgers. Never said that. Yes, you did. Um, you need to lose weight. You're so fat. How could my daughter be this fat? You wish you looked like me. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. No one's ever going to want you. You wonder why you have no friends. She, um, once told me that I had failed a grade in school and that I was going to have to go to summer school. I panicked. I called my school and made an appointment to see the principal the next day. Turns out I didn't fail the grade. I didn't have to go to summer school. She just lied and told me I had. And looking back now, I see that I wasn't the fat little pig I was told I was. And that's definitely very painful to me. Dr. Phil, Every single one of those statements she's saying is an absolutely false statement. I've never told my daughter she was not going to amount to anything. I've never told her she'd be anything other than flipping burgers. I've never called my daughter fat ever in my life as God is my witness. Have you been to therapy with her? We had one joint counseling session. We were court ordered to go to therapy. She was seeing the counselor on her time. I was seeing the counselor on my time. The one session that we were supposed to meet together just happened to be the same February 4th that we were in court over the sexual text messages. Yeah, well, I've got questions about that. And coming up, I want to talk about a fight over a flute that ended up being used against Beverly in court. We'll be right back. throw a check on the floor and say, have a nice life. This is Hollywood. This is where you do that. You don't do that. <laughs> and later. I put on my bathrobe and I drove over to his house and I'm like, give me my flute. She's banging on your door. I let her in. Threatening to kick my bedroom door down. And yelling what? I want my flute. Give me the flute. Season of Dr. Phil. 
My dad sent him money to a woman in Mexico that he had an affair with. She had to have a lung transplant. You paid for the lung. So she just showed up to a clinic with a lung and an igloo cooler and said, I'm here to get a transplant. That's basically what happened. Do you think maybe she's lied to you? I just want to know the truth. Is my brother-in-law a monster? An uncle too affectionate with his 16-year-old niece? You're sending her a letter that says, I love you with all my heart. You put whipped cream on your neck, and Grace says you ask her to lick it off. I don't remember doing that. The creep meter is pegging over here. Plus, you were the facialist to the stars. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox. Accused of hiring a hitman to kill her rival. Did you solicit someone to kill this man? It was one of those, oh, I could kill this person. I should find someone to take him out. You typed out a text message. I have found someone that can do this deed for me. This fall on Dr. Phil. During the custody battle, the judge ordered that my mom and I go to reunification therapy. From the very beginning, the counselor and I did not get along. She labeled me a child abuser because I yelled at my daughter. We had one joint session. My mother broke down emotionally, got on her hands and knees, and started begging me to tell her what she did that was so evil. The therapist tried to intervene. My mother got up, threw the check in the therapist's face, told me to have a nice life and stormed off. And that was our reunification therapy. My question for you is, you're five years into this, right? Mm -hmm. If you're so smart, how come you're in such a bad situation? Because I made some emotional, irrational moves during this because I was an emotional wreck because someone, <clears throat> my daughter doesn't want me. She's leaving my life. No, 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 no. wait a minute. You just, you just made a conclusion. You just said, my daughter doesn't want me. That's part of your strategy. You're the victim. You're the victim. You're always the victim. She doesn't want me. She's abandoned me. He's alienated her from me. The therapist doesn't like me. The judge is wrong. This one is this. It's, it's all, everybody's lined up against you. That's how I felt. If you get up in the morning and go to the grocery store and you get in an argument with somebody and, and they're just like, nyah, 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 and you go, wow, boy. Yeah, he was really a jerk. And then you go over to church and you're there for a while and some lady over there, boy, she was really a jerk. Pretty soon you gotta understand, you're the jerk. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta ask yourself, it's like, wow. I, under, I understand what Let's you're Let's look at this letter. After several efforts to reunify mother and child, this clinician indefinitely suspended reunification services due to mother's behavior in a conjoint session. That means with daughter. During the session, mother refused feedback, ignored daughter's tears, yelled at the minor child, threw magazines in her direction, threw a check on the floor and said, have a nice life as she walked out. She continues to project blame onto the father and the minor child. Jerk, jerk. <laughs> for the problems that led to the current estrangement. Sometimes she continues to refer to Courtney as a liar and spoiled. Additionally, it's my observation that mother's allegations of sexual abuse against the father and her decision to reference these allegations on Facebook oh. has further damaged the relationship. It is the opinion of this clinician that reunification therapy would be emotionally detrimental to the minor child at this point. This is a therapist whose job it is to bring mother and daughter back together. Yes, sir. And as I said, that was the morning. And she says, I quit. <laughs> she said, I quit. It was, a, it was a very horrible session, sir. She sat there as I'm at, as Courtney said, I was at her knees begging for forgiveness. And I'm 
begging, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you, Courtney. I'm sorry, I yelled at you. And my daughter was recoiling in the chair. You throw a check on the floor and say, have a nice life. I, this is Hollywood. This is where you do that. You don't do that. <laughs> there comes a point when you've been beat up enough that you just are, I'm done. I didn't want to fight anymore. The other therapist, you threatened to sue them. No, I did not. I said, you know, I'm Courtney's mother. She's underage. We sp still have joint physical and legal custody. Anytime she goes to see a doctor, I'm supposed to be informed and well as well. I'd so like to know. So you let that therapist know that she'd run a red light? I, yeah, yeah, I did. Because it's my daughter. I'm supposed to know. I'm supposed yeah. to be filled in. And, and nowhere in there did you say you've, you've violated something here by not allowing me to know, not letting me know that you're seeing her? I did say I violated, but that's not saying I'm going to sue you. Did you threaten that therapist? I did not threaten the therapist, sir. So you're here to defend your conduct? No, sir, I'm not. Wait, no. <laughs> no, I mean you're not here to defend your conduct. I, I know I've done. Because you sound like you're defending your conduct. I wanted to know what was going on with my well, daughter. Maybe, so, how much help did you get from that therapist that quit? So none. I have. I got plenty of help from my counselor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't meet you before then. <laughs> Well, I'm not giving up. What would it take for Courtney to forgive her mother? And I'm still going to talk about this damn flute. We'll be right back. What was she saying? I want my flute. Give me the flute. That's my grandfather's flute. I want the flute. I'm going to break the bad word door down. Closed captioning provided by... It's back to school time. You think your car smells fine, but your passengers smell this. Eliminate odors you've gone nose blind to for up to 30 days with the Febreze car vent clip. Break out the Febreze and breathe happy. Arm & Hammer combines strength and beauty for true radiance. So for my radiant smile, I use new Truly Radiant Rejuvenating Toothpaste. In just five days, it cleans, whitens, repairs, and strengthens enamel with a twist of mist. Be radiant with new Truly Radiant. conflict resolution was difficult for me because her way was to just run away and leave and come back the next day and pretend it didn't happen and that just didn't work for me I wanted to talk things out and that didn't work for her when we were divorced I think people who knew us well were not terribly surprised people who didn't know us so well were absolutely shocked Beverly says she is desperate to have a relationship with her daughter again, but Courtney says Beverly needs to admit how outrageous her behavior has been, including sending a photographer to stalk her at a high school sports game, storming out of therapy, and allegedly stealing an ambulance. Did you steal an ambulance? No, sir. Did she steal an ambulance? That is the legend in the fire department. I wasn't there. <laughs> Why do people say you stole an ambulance? <laughs> I took my ambulance down to the beach, and I sat there and tried to figure out life. So you just <laughs> borrowed the ambulance? <laughs> no, I was technically still on duty. So, so I just... I. Pulled myself out. I, yeah, I went down to the beach and I just sat there. In the, in the ambulance? Yes, yeah, sir. Did you get in a fight over a flute? Yes, sir, I did. I was sound asleep in my bed at 10.30 at night. Someone comes to my door, pounding on my door. There's some woman out there. And I'm like, can I help you? She goes, I have something for you. I'm like, what do you have? She goes, I've got papers for you. You've been served. My husband was filing, filing for full custody. Okay, so that upsets you. Yes. So I put on my bathrobe and I drove over to his house and I'm like, what in the world are you doing? What are you doing here? Why are you doing this? And he's telling me, I should have done this a long time ago. And uh, he, he's going on and on. And I'm like, give me my flute. My flute was my flute. <laughs> 
My flute was given to me by my grandfather when I was 15 years old. She's at your door, right? Oh, yeah, we heard the cars come to a screeching halt. And she's banging on your door. I let her in. You Rather let her than in. make a scene in the neighborhood or call 911, I let her in. I told Courtney, go get the recorder, turn on the recorder. She did. And Courtney went and hid inside her bathroom behind two locked doors because she's fearful of her mother. Mm -hmm. And did she come to those doors? Yes. Banging on the doors? Threatening to kick my bedroom door down. Uh huh. And yelling what? What was she saying? I want my flute. Give me the flute. It's my grandfather's flute. I want the flute. I'm going to break the bad words door down. Um, Dad saying, no, you're not. She grabbed a stool, said, this is my stool. I, we had it when we were married. She threw the stool on the ground. It bounced up, ch took a chunk out of my dad's leg. Uh, she tried to take a picture off the wall, saying that she took that. Then give me my flute. I want the flute. <laughs> my dad got her to calm down enough went so that she would go out to the kitchen. He came back, told me to give him the flute. I gave him the flute. She left. Can I finish explaining about the flute, sir? I think I'm pretty caught up on the flute. Uh, I, this is the flute. We've got the flute here. This happened on the night before the first day of her sophomore year of high school. She needs the flute for school. Courtney would have had to march with an air flute. Excuse me, to Mr. Humiliate Phil, that's her. absolutely incorrect. She had a new flute. She had a brand new flute. So she would not be air fluting. Uh, Beverly asked for my help to repair her relationship with Courtney, and I've got some very specific advice that I think she needs to hear, that I think everybody needs to hear when we come back. And trust me, I am going to put some very specific verbs in my sentences. We'll be right back. <laughs> An all new Dr. Phil. Is her Nigerian husband deceiving her? I see mom being James' cash cow. James, did you refer to Deanna as an ATM? I don't call my wife an ATM. That's Monday. What you're doing is not working. Right. I agree. And let's talk about what it is you're doing. I, I think you have a serious impulse control disorder. And you have a flair for the dramatic. And language is very powerful. Y you use language that is catastrophic. Like to Courtney, you said, just put a gun to my head and get it over with. You are the very life in my body. Without you, I have no life. I'm such a terrible mother to cause you to cut yourself and let you return week after week to the scene of the crime. The good news is that I will never be able to steal your happiness again. I will always love you more than you could ever will ever know, even though you, the one person who I never thought would abandon me, did. I mean, my God. God, you're like a soap opera on repeat. <laughs> this is how you talk to yourself. It's how you talk to yourself. And language is very powerful. And when you, when you use that language, there's no other way to feel than just so put upon and so burdened to Christopher. I've not said an angry word to her since our argument about her messes. Why don't you just take the gun and put it to the head and blow my brains out so you're going to have stereo guns to your head because you want them both to blow your brains out. You're allowing her to lie. You're feeding her fire. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying, sir. Yes. My, my emotions were completely out of control. Because my whole world had just been ripped apart. No, because your whole world hadn't been ripped apart because you and I are on the same world. And if it had been ripped apart, I would have fallen off the globe. <laughs> it hasn't been ripped apart. Your world hasn't been ripped apart. You have been inconvenienced about things that matter. 
The most important thing in your life is that your daughter is healthy and happy. Yes, this. Okay? What, what you should thank God for every morning is that she is healthy, mm -hmm. that she's beautiful and articulate and bright. Mm -hmm. Your daughter is sitting right here and she says, I want my mother in my life. If you will just calm down and get yourself under control and realize you don't have to be the victim all the time. That's fine, I, I, sir, and I want okay, my- Let me tell you a problem. You started talking the split second I stopped. And what I know is that you had to be thinking of what you were going to say while I was talking. Because you're not smart enough to be thinking that fast no, sir, to not. formulate your answer in the tenth of a second between when I stopped and you started. Which means you weren't listening to me. You were thinking what you were going to say. I was listening there to you. There you go. No, sir. No, I'm listening to you. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. Unless you really get some help and unless you really recognize that you have to inspire rather than dictate a relationship with your daughter she's not going to want to have a relationship with you but you can have what you want it's let me tell you if you will just do some things that I'm telling you here, mm -hmm. this situation can be a great deal better in a very short period of time. And that's what I would like. It really, really can. She is going to have to learn to trust you again, and it's going to be a day at a time. It's not going to be a success-only journey. Mm -hmm. But you need to recognize that she's an adult, I do. and if you're going to have a relationship it's going to be because she wants to. And we want to be around people that when we've been around them, we feel better about who we are. Mm -hmm. I, I promise you, I like to be around people that when I've finished being around them, I feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be around people that when I finish being around them, I feel worse about myself. <laughs> That's a pretty simple equation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all know people that when they come in the room, it feels like somebody left. And they just suck the energy out of the room. Yes, sir, I do know people like that. And we, we're, around, <laughs> and we're around people that when they're around, we just go, oh, my God. <laughs> I'll bet you can be a lot of fun. I can be. Yes, sir, I can be. If, if they don't have to live with you or... <laughs> You know, or, no, seriously. I, I, you know, Dr. If, Phil, I make big messes in my house. I make outrageous messes in my house. But when I'm done, I pick them up. Uh, uh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't care. Okay, I know. But... <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care what you do with them. What I care is what you do with your daughter. Because I want you to have what you want. I want. This is a wonderful young lady here. I know I, she is. I want you to have a relationship with her. But to do that, you, you need some help to calm yourself down mm -hmm. and recognize that this is her option and you need to earn it and just as she does with you and are, are, are you seeing a therapist now currently no are you willing to yes sir um, I'm I'm willing to arrange that for you okay and I'm gonna pick them okay <laughs> Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today.
We're going to take a little turn and meet a mother-daughter who actually get along great. The only thing they're battling is father time. Take a look. I started feeling overwhelmed with the signs of aging about seven years ago. When I look at my face in the mirror, I see the crow's feet. I wish I would have not laid in the sun so much because I've ruined my skin. I do this a lot. So I'm noticing that I'm starting to gain lines in there. I want to make sure that I have that opportunity to stop it before I'm feeling like she does. Every day I wash my face, my skin starts looking flaky and dull. I pile on moisturizer. I put it on pretty thick. The makeup is staying in the creases of my crow's feet, the 11 line. This is my 11 line. You see, you got two lines that go down each spot right here. Do I have that? Well, you will probably. <laughs> If my face is feeling a little dry, then I'll decide to put on moisturizer, but every now and then I'll tend to use an exfoliator maybe once a week. It's not that I don't care about what I put on my face, it's just my lack of knowledge on what's gonna be best for my skin. I barely wear makeup. Mom tells me I'm gonna have to wear it one day. Guilty. I recently turned 50. It worries me now that the wrinkles are just gonna get worse quicker. So we decided to send beauty expert Jamie Krell to pay this pair a visit. Let's see what she had to say. I understand that each of you have major concerns about anti-aging, specifically fine lines and wrinkles. Is that true? That's correct. I'm starting to notice wrinkles on my forehead. Ultimately, I want to make sure that these aren't going to be a concern. There are really easy, simple things that you can do where your skin will really benefit from these ideas and tips I'm going to share with you today. So the three major categories are sun protection, diet, and skin care. In terms of sun exposure, do you sit out in the sun? Do you go to the tanning beds? I worked at a tanning salon for a few years, and I would tan probably three to four times a week. A week? A week. I'm going to try to block that <laughs> from my mind, but that is awful. Sun exposure is the number one cause of premature aging. Protect yourself when you are out in the sun. Sunscreen, hat, and sunglasses are always a must. Okay, now tell me about you, kiddo. If I do go out in the sun, I do put on sunscreen, but I try to avoid it if at all possible. That's why your skin looks so beautiful, and we want to keep it that way. So today I'm going to share with you even more tips and information to keep your skin looking and feeling its very best. So tell me a little bit about how your diet is. Well, sometimes I take a vitamin, and then, you know, I usually try to eat right. A multivitamin is great, but studies have shown that it's actually more beneficial to get those vitamins from the whole foods and fruits and vegetables themselves. So my first suggestion is to eat a diet that is high in antioxidants. Blueberries really pack some of the biggest punch when it comes to antioxidants. A great source of vitamin A comes from carrots or sweet potatoes. Vitamin C and E come from kale, dark grapes, strawberries. So these are things that you should be noshing on and it can actually help reverse some of that damage that you see today. I try to encourage people to stick to the outer perimeter of the supermarket because that's where the fresh fruits and veggies and whole foods are. These are easy, effective ideas and you'll nourish the cells in your body from within and as a result, your skin will glow. Now let's talk about your skincare routine. Well, typically, I use bar soap. I notice that I have some dry, flaky, irritated skin. Well, some soaps can strip essential moisture from the skin and really throw off your pH balance. So that's what could be causing the dryness and the irritation. Something else that bothers me is the makeup settles into the lines in my forehead, the crow's feet, around my face. I definitely don't want to have that problem. I'm not great about wearing makeup now, but eventually that's something that I I'm gonna have to do. For you, Jodine, I would recommend something that is brand new and just launched. It's from Boots Number no. 7. It's called their Restore and Renew Day and Night Serum. It's really easy to use every morning and every evening right after cleansing. And you will see that this targets and tackles all of your anti-aging concerns. It's gonna put the moisture back into your skin. And this is clinically proven to actually deliver those anti-aging benefits specifically targeted towards mature skin. So I want you to take this 
Great. Start using it immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now for you, Jen, I want to give you one of my personal favorites. It's from Boots Number no. 7. It's called the Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Serum. When this product launched over in the UK, it became the fastest selling anti aging serum. They actually were selling one every 10 seconds. Wow. It's clinically proven to take care and reduce the appearance of those lines and wrinkles in just four weeks. So I want to give you this. Start using it right away. I want to let you ladies know you can go and get these right at Target, and they're less than 30 I want you both to be able to start on this path to clear, amazing, beautiful skin. So Boots Number no. 7 wants to give you each a one-year supply. So you can start today. It's awesome. The results will only get better over time, and you will have the best skin ever. And so you can also try it for yourself. Everyone in the audience is going home with both Boots serums today. All right? <clears throat> I want to thank all of my guests today. Uh, now, if you've been estranged from a loved one, do you find yourself the black sheep of the family? Have you ever thought to yourself, you know, Dr. Phil just might be my only answer? If so, write to me. Send me an email. I want to hear from you. You can reach us at drphil.com. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Thank you.